Hey everyone, Rogue Guild here. I know I'm probably really late to the party here. Everyone has already covered this stuff overnight because I'm in quite possibly the worst time zone ever to cover Swedish news. But anyway, a few hours ago, Yannick treated us to a 15 tweet long thread regarding the past, present, and future of State of the Game, providing us with some insight as to what's been going on with it ever since the fiasco with it at the start of this year, as well as giving us a bit of a roadmap as to what we can expect with it in the coming months. Originally, I wasn't going to do a video on this when I first saw it, uh, but I kind of reconsidered because while I think a lot of longtime Division fans will know and understand the majority of what he's saying here. I know not everyone here is a longtime fan. I had someone comment just yesterday about how they just started playing in August and were interested in tuning into future State of the Games if Massive uh, ends up doing them. So this is valuable information for everyone. I just wanted to get the word out there. Uh, so let's dive in and just slowly digest Yannick's uh, tweet thread here. Let's go. All right, so we're here on Yannick's Twitter. I apologize for it being light mode. All right, I'm not signed in. I, I, I'm sure some people are going to be mad about that, but whatever. We're here. We're on his Twitter. Again, if you want to go follow me, rogue underscore gold on Twitter. I retweeted this, and I always do for, you know, big development updates similar to this regarding The Division. Um, so if you want to stay up to date, you can certainly go follow me there. I have a link in the description. But let's get into what Yannick said here. This is, like I said, 15 long tweet thread. Pretty big. Uh, I, I definitely appreciate him, you know, giving us this much information and a look behind the curtain as he puts it for uh for what's been going on so let's get into it 1 out of 15. There has been a lot of conversation about State of the Game in the past and more recently so let me pull the curtain a bit and explain why we decided to put it on ice for a while. There's a lot that happens behind the scenes with State of the Game. I know it probably often seems improvised and while there is always a degree of improvisation there's a significant amount of preparation work behind every show and yeah I think this is uh that part in 2 out of 15 there is pretty evident. Right, we, we would always see them prep tons of different uh, cards for each of them to go through to have their different talking points. They would always uh, prep and provide a bunch of different graphics and stuff like that. Um, and so, you know, the improvisation part definitely comes into where chat's involved and in answering different questions and whatnot. But I think there was definitely, you could tell that there was some sort of plan in place. Um, and that takes time to do. It doesn't, you know, come out of thin air. So absolutely, that's, uh, that's a relevant point. We have an editorial strategy that maps out the main topics of each day of the game over a certain period of time. The streaming setup needs to be in place and ready. The assets need to be prepared in the right format and stored at the right place. And that's what I was just talking about with the different... Um, assets and what's the word i'm thinking of graphics that they would prepare for us um and we saw even sometimes that they weren't able to find some of them because i'm sure it's a lot of work to get them all prepared get them all formatted right and then store them in the same place so that they're ready to go you know a one button's click um and that sometimes didn't always go through because it's a big endeavor some of the information needs to be gathered in advance. Stats, for example, can take days to be put together. That's the preparation of the guests if they're not already experienced. We do a dry run for each show to make sure everyone is familiar with the content. Now, I didn't know they did a dry run. I mean, it makes sense um, for anything like that to do it. But again, that's just more time for them to take out of their day to do that. And now before, we had people like uh, Hamish and like Yannick when he was in a community role to be able to do this stuff while the actual devs were working on the game throughout the week. But now... Yannick is leading, we don't really have a specific community person, and so I can imagine that doing something like this in the current day would just take that much more time out of development and out of getting the new content ready, which I'm not sure anyone would really want to go for. Everything needs to be put in a run of the show that will be shared with our communication and marketing partners for validation. Sometimes it takes several iterations before we reach an agreement, etc., <laughs> etc. Et this is probably the most important thing he says here, and this is what I always try and underscore to people, just how controlling Ubisoft PR is. Everything that they want to say on State of the Game on Twitter, not necessarily this stuff, but on, on game content specifically and stuff regarding the game, has to be run by Ubisoft PR and Ubisoft's internal, um, you know, marketing departments and all that stuff. And it's a pain. And it's they are really the ones to blame whenever you get upset about there being no news because the devs don't get to choose any of that stuff. But I'll come back to that later. That's a very important part he makes there, though, in... Uh, 5 out of 15. The bottom line is that it takes more than a couple of devs spontaneously grabbing their webcam and chatting about anything. All of it takes time and people who can invest a major part of their working hours into championing this. And this is just what I was saying, how they used to have people for this. Hamish, Johan, Chris, back when he was there, uh, Petter, Yannick, and now they don't really, at least as far as we know, have someone who can dedicate their time specifically to that. Um, and I think that's absolutely a big factor as to why we haven't seen it this past year, along with the fact that there's just been nothing to talk about while we're waiting for um, the next big update to be finalized. Then, State of the Game is a bit of a double-edged sword. It's great when we have many things to talk about, but when we hit a quiet period, like I was just saying, it becomes harder to produce a weekly show with meaningful content. We all have opinions on whether or not those empty State of the Games are valuable. That is a big contention point within the uh, community. I think they are, as far as just seeing the devs and knowing that they're there and working on stuff. 
Um, but a lot of people don't find them valuable. Some people did come bring up a good um, solution to this in the comments or a possible remedy, which was that in the future, if they wanted to do live broadcast state of the games when there was actual stuff to talk about, that would be great. And then in the off weeks, when there isn't a bunch of stuff to talk about, still just do an article. You know, even the, the briefest amount of news or, or updates on what's going on in the live game would be appreciated just to know that they're there and listening. Even though we know that they are, it's just good to see it, um, you know, actualized sometimes. So that would be a good solution, I think, to the people who, who um, suggested that. When we created State of the Game, our intention was to have a regular rendezvous between devs and the community. No matter if we would have news or not, we would be here to chat and answer questions. We don't only show up to build hype, we're also here during the hard times. And that's absolutely true. They've always been here when there's been a lot of um, community outcry and, you know, people being upset. And um, they were always there, so i got to give them full credit for that. A lot of people wouldn't be able to take that heat and be able to do that. And they were always there, even if we were, you know, um, wrongly directing our our uh, frustration, like I was saying, when it should have been directed at UBPR or potentially other departments, they were always there, so respect for that. But no matter how much we tell ourselves it's important, at a human level, it's never easy to come up with a show knowing you're going to frustrate part of the audience. Sure, chat only represents a portion of the viewers, but we still come out of those questioning ourselves. Yeah, not much to say there. What keeps us going is knowing that there will be a light at the end of the tunnel and that soon we will be able to come out... Sorry, I messed that up. We will come with good and exciting news. And that's I can understand that from their point of view. They know everything that's coming in the future, whereas we're completely in the dark. And so the state of the games were sometimes our only window in, and if they didn't share stuff, then it's like, well, what's actually happening behind the scenes? And they're just not able to say it. Again, another point of tension between the devs and Ubisoft PR. Really frustrating situation there, but um, it is a little bit disheartening to see that they had to question themselves sometimes on that stuff, knowing that you know the community would be upset. People are just mean sometimes. Anyway, when we announced new content would come, we knew it would be months until we'd have anything meaningful to share. The idea of keeping State of the Game going for months without being able to shed any light on the new content didn't sit right and seemed disrespectful to the community. I can understand that, and obviously, yes, there would have been nothing to talk about for the majority of this past year. Maybe it would have been nice still to get one every three months, even if you're just talking about the the rerun season. I don't know. But also, also I think... Um, you know, Hamish moved on to um, UB Stockholm. Johan moved on to a different company, Corsair, maybe, or someone else. Um, so I've, as he talks about in a minute, we didn't really have anyone to take on that role during this past year, along with the fact that there was no new info to share. So that makes sense. People would show up at every state of the game wondering, is this the one only to be disappointed time and time again, week after week? This I understand, though, if they did want to do them during this past year, like I said, every three months or something, they could have just been very clear. We won't have anything to talk about until maybe the end of the year, maybe early next year. Um, but this was certainly a factor back in the day when these would run every week. At the same time, Hamish moved on to another role, as I just said. He was a major architect behind State of the Game, and his contribution goes way beyond just hosting it. Johan also decided to move on, and he was the one taking care of the content, like I just described a second ago. It just wasn't realistic to carry on, and it seemed like a good place to stop for a while, regroup, and look to the future. I do regret that we couldn't make one final send-off show. I also regret that. I really wish we could have gotten that with Hamish and some of those old folks, uh, but I understand that that's sometimes just not uh, able to happen. So here we are, months later. Will State of the Game come back when we resume communication? I don't know. I hope it will. I still believe in it. We'll need the people with the drive and time to dedicate to it, and so far we haven't found them. But I've always been an optimist. All right, there you go. That's the breakdown from the man himself on what their thinking is with State of the Game. I hope that made sense to a lot of you. As I mentioned in there, a key part, in my opinion, is the validation process they have to go through with each and every news dump. This is always a point I try and drive home when talking about game development, especially at Ubisoft, since that's where my knowledge lies, and it's that the devs just can't head over to Twitter and let us know what's going on behind the scenes and what type of content we can expect in the future, because that's simply just not in their power. Each and every official news bite uh, about upcoming content or whatever it may be has to be ran by and approved by Ubisoft's internal PR department. And for the most part, they're the ones that hold so much of this stuff back from us, which is why it's always frustrated me when people leave hateful comments to the devs in regard to the lack of news when it's really just not their fault. Um, but moving on, you saw at the end, there's still a chance for state of the game. Yannick still sees value in the program. I would wager the majority of the development team and the community do as well. Uh, but ultimately, they need someone to spearhead that for multiple reasons like he laid out in this thread. And so far, they haven't found a 
new community manager for that role, which really sucks because I know they've been searching since early this year, I want to say. So I'll just say if you care about this game and if you care about state of the game, potentially seeing it return in the future, apply for the job. Send the application to friends or, you know, just advertise it in general. I'm sure there's plenty of people who would love to take on that role, and I suppose they just haven't found the right person yet. Overall, as it pertains to the future of Division 2 news, of course, I would love to see state of the game return. I love that show and I miss it dearly. Ultimately, though, I do just want the devs to be able to focus on delivering the new content in as timely a manner as they can. And so if that means not reinstating it for the time being, I can live with that. I just really hope that the eventual reveal of this new content and Heartland, for that matter, is able to be handled in a way that the devs want it to be. I don't just want some corporatized trailer with non-specific selling points. I want the nitty gritty. I want the details. That's what the devs were always able to deliver us on State of the Game, and they did so with a clear passion. So whether it's a presentation at a Division event, a Ubisoft Forward, a pre-recorded showcase, a live stream, an article, whatever, I just hope that the people who have been hard at work on this over the past eight months get to have their say in how this is all going to be done, because they deserve to reveal their work in the way that they want to after so long of nothingness. But I suppose that's all up to Ubisoft PR, isn't it? Your play. Jerks. Uh, no, but really, we'll see how things shake out for now. I'm just going to take Yannick's position on this and say I'll stay optimistic. As always, we're just going to have to wait and see what awaits us in the coming weeks and months. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you can be updated every time I upload. Let me know your thoughts about Yannick's deep dive regarding State of the Game today. Did any of it surprise you? Mostly what you knew and expected and what do you think about its future? Do you think they'll ever be able to throw one together for the new contents reveal or think it may perhaps uh, come in a different format? The reveal, that is. Definitely leave all that down below. I'm As always, I'm very curious to hear what everyone's thinking about that. And if there are any newer players around, as I mentioned at the start of the video, feel free to leave any questions if you have I know game development can seem like a strange process at times, uh, and so if any of it doesn't make sense to you, I can of course try and explain things to the best of my knowledge, and I'm sure others would be happy to chime in as well. That's going to do it for me today, everyone. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and until the next one, guys, Rogue Gold. Ow.